Hello everybody and welcome to this episode of Programming and Algorithms. In this episode we're going to look at how Python implements sorting and in particular we'll focus on bubble sort which we've done in pseudocode already. So we'll remember the principle of bubble sort is we look at the first and second value and if the first value is larger than the second one then we swap it around. Then we look at the second and third, third and fourth, fourth and fifth, fifth and sixth. We keep on checking if the smaller one, smaller location has a larger value than the higher location. And if it does, we swap them around. So then when we get to the end of the array, we go to the start again and do it again and again and again. And if the array is 10 values long, we do it 10 times. And at the end of the 10 iterations, we should have the whole array sorted. Here's the code for bubble sort. It actually looks very similar to the pseudo code. I have stuck on top program bubble sort again unnecessarily, but I, I want it there and I want you guys to be writing your code, always naming your program and ending at the end with an end full stop. We've seen how we declare an array in Python. So then as we will recall, there's two loops. We have an outer index and it goes from the range zero to whatever the length of the array is. And then we have an inner loop, which is whatever the um, range of the array is again, and it's the length minus one. We will remember now when we're thinking about Python, if I say zero to length of age, if age is eight, zero to eight means zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If I say zero to length of age minus one, that means zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. If we were to replace, if we were to call the length of the array n, the outer loop is in, in, in range 0 to n minus 1. The inner loop is in the range 0 to n minus 2. And if that doesn't make sense, go back when we talked about loops and the for loop. So inside our second loop, we've got the if statement. And if it, all we're checking is if the position, this, the higher of the two positions is smaller, higher of the two positions in terms of location is smaller in value than the lower of the two positions then we just swap around and we've seen how we do swap and then we keep on doing that and then all I've added in at the end of the second in for is I've just said print the array age out we'll print out the values and we'll see it'll say 16, 18, 23, 33, 34 etc so it'll be sorted and again click that code from my website or from my courses and have a look at it and you'll see it working we'll recall that one of the optimizations we identified is because what is happening at each pass of bubble sort is the largest value in the array is being passed to the correct position, then the second largest value is being put in that position, the third largest value is being put in that position. The white triangle there, there's no point looping from the start to the end of the array each time because the first time the first value is, is in the correct position, the second time the largest two values are in the correct position, the third time the largest three values in, are in the correct position and so on. So no actual point going from the start to the end of the array each time. We should go from start to the end, start to the end minus one, start to the end minus two, start to the end minus three. And that really significantly reduces our search time. So it's quite simple to implement that. All we do is add in a new variable called reducing index and it starts off as being the length of the array minus one. And we, our, for our inner loop, we, we use the value reducing index. And each time we, we finish in the inner loop, we reduce the value of reducing index by one. That means we're taking one away each pass. So we go, for two, if the length of the array is eight, we go as far as the eighth value, then the seventh value, the sixth value, the fifth value, the fourth value. So we go from zero to eight, zero to seven, zero to six, zero to five, zero to four. And that reduces our search time significantly. We also said that if, if we're passed in an array that the data has already been sorted in, we should add in a Boolean check for that. So if we add in a new variable of Boolean type called false, that we did a swap, let's assume we haven't done a swap, and then if a swap does occur, let's say that did swap is true. Then we add in at the end of the for loop, the, the inner for loop, we say if we didn't do any swaps at all, during a whole one pass of the array, forget about it, this array is already sorted, so break out of it because the array is sorted. So this is a nice, neat way of stopping the loops as soon as you feel the array is sorted. So I do an entire pass 
and no swaps have occurred, then I'm happy, yeah, this array was passed in to be sorted, so we're grand. And we'll make this comment, um, we, we said that we could create a swap function when we're talking about pseudocode, and uh, how we do it in Python is exactly uh, as with the other one. So we use the def command def to define a, ver uh, a method or a module called swap, and it takes in two values, a and b, temp value gets b, b gets a, and a gets temp value, and then we return, that's our other keyword, return a and b. And now a will have the value that was in b, and b will have the value in a. And, and the rest of the code will be exactly the same as before, except we'll, instead of, um, instead of um, doing the swap inside the code, we just have this line that says, index element i and i plus one are swapped around. The fun thing about Python is, remember I explained how tricky swap is to do because you have to store one value in a variable. Well, Python actually takes care of that for you. So I think this is neat. If you say a comma b gets the value b comma a, that means it'll know swap A with B and B with A. So if A has a value of 5 and B has a value of 10, if I say A comma B gets B comma A, A will get the value 10 and B will get the value of 5. So Python is really clever like that. So it allows, it says, and if I want to swap A, B, C with C, B, A, I just do A comma B comma C gets the value C comma B comma A, and it'll do it and it'll remember what value. It'll assign A to B but it'll remember what value A had and it'll assign B to the value A, so that's very nice. And in the same way with an array, it'll do the same thing. So if I just say age index comma age index plus one gets the values of age index plus one comma age index, it will do that for us. So we don't actually need a temporary variable for Python, but for most other programming languages, it doesn't allow you to do that and you need to remember the temporary value. But Python is a very neat language for list processing and things like that, as I said. So we could replace that the swap with just this line here and say age index, age index plus one gets age index plus one comma age index, and that works as well. So that's bubble sort and some little variations on bubble sort. So if you want to play around with that code, it's all available for you. Over to you now, and we'll see you on the next episode. <laughs>